I say Zico, but who knows? Say what you want. I'm not using slides. This is more like a timeline story. And everything is on tinyurl.com slash I a T two in my last name, Zico. So you can get to there if you wanted to link to some of the blog posts and stuff that I have on here. I lived in New York City, Montreal, and I brought Cycling Savvy to Illinois. In 2013, after 34 years in Urbana, I moved to LA to be with my daughter and her family. And I wanted to see what's happening in the cycling world here. So I was wondering, you know, are there going to be cyclists here? And are they going to need Cycling Savvy? And all this kind of stuff. So I'm sort of Watching out from my table, Carrie knows this, right? You've sat there and watched the salmon cyclists go down there. And 7 o'clock on a Tuesday, and I'm just wondering, you know, I wonder what the deal is here. Are there any cyclists that use these streets? And I'm looking down, and I say, oh, yeah, there are some guys coming up here. Oh, yeah, there's some more guys coming up here. Whoa, Whoa there's even more guys coming up here. And I'm looking, it's hey, the Helens team. some of them are out of their saddle. I mean, this, this is a hill. This goes uphill, right? This is called the Pershing Bump. So there's a little group here that do some now cycling. Now they two lanes. So I'm thinking, uh, well, that's kind of interesting, you know. Uh, maybe I can find out what these guys are up to and, you know, get to know them a little bit and maybe get them cycling savvy. And I know it's going to be hard. So I joined the new pier ride. This is called the new pier ride. And... Uh, I know where it goes, where it starts from. So I said, I, I wanted to get back and sort of, I used to race, you know, I'm in my 40s, so I want to get in shape. Maybe I can sort of ride with these guys a little bit and talk to them and whatever. So it turns out that Seth Davidson has a blog called Cycling the South Bay. Many of you probably know it. He was writing about doing something radical, taking the lane on Pacific Coast Highway on their rides, weekend rides up to Malibu, you know. And I said, wow, this is cool. You know, I, I want to you know, sort of get involved in this. So I said, I'll go out to one of the rides and see if I can hang on and then talk to Seth. And I was sort of concerned that, I want to introduce myself. And it was good. I thought it was going to be a really big ride. And I was concerned about having 120 people up there. I said, maybe we should divide them into groups or whatever it is, you know. So I talked to him. The next day, I show up in his blog, right? And this is me, you know. I'm signage dude, right? <laughs> I had been shelled the second the pace picked up, you know, you can read this. Read it out loud. I'm not going to read this out loud. You can link to it. So you can sort of get the idea that trying to tell these guys what to do, Mother Effer is a former elite national crit champ, wins effing races just by showing up and scaring the <laughs> out of the competition due to such a badass he has a tattoo on his butt that says bad. You're going to tell that mother how to ride? And this really encapsulates. So I say, what are my chances now of doing anything here? <laughs> They've gone to zero. Did you say that during the conversation? Or is no, no. Now, everything he writes is perfectly true, except the stuff he makes up, right? <laughs> so there is some element to truth of this. Some of it was not quite right. So what am I going to do? How am I going to get back into this group, you know? And so I figured out a way, and it sort of went like this. This is Seth Davidson. Can you see him? He was riding with a slower group that day. I saw my shot. We were coming off a red light, so the group was sort of intact, saying, I'm going to go out there. You see what the guy says on the back of his jersey? Mm -hmm. Go to the front. That's a new pure ride jersey that they had. And Seth Davidson is the, is the wankmeister. And, he said, and anybody, you know, you complain about anything, you go to the front. They just want you to get out there and kill yourself, you know? So here's my big chance. <laughs> This guy also went screaming off. You can see me in the shadow. So I'm hanging on to this. He's in a tough position, right? He's down. And I'm saying, can I hang on? I know Seth is watching. Can I get around this guy? And I pull my, I didn't stay there very long. <laughs> now everything is cool, right? Now what does this have with being a cycling savvy instructor? Absolutely nothing. It made you Although, improve yourself. Yeah, so there's a culture here. So I was able to do that. That was kind of cool at that point, you know. It was okay for, for Seth. So going to the front. So I went to the front, and that sort of changed some things. You know, you saw that. Uh, and we also had some interesting discussions about the PCH, and I was able to use some of the illustrations on Seth's blog and comments to show him some of Kerry's examples and stuff. So I started getting to know as somebody who knew something and looking at me. So it turns out, 
we uh, got four citations of cyclists on the PCH. And this is Greg Weiber who got the citation this time. There's Seth when he had to be a mustache, and that's me. And um, why can't I think of Eric Bruins? He was the policy director for the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition at the time. So we went down to Santa Monica, expert witnesses. All four times, the sheriff deputy never showed up. You know? yeah. So we won. Seth was happy with that. So I got to be known as sort of a expert witness, even though I never got a chance to witness, and having the cycling savvy materials was a real boost, because they thought I was a genius. You know, when you, when you pull out something like, uh, you know, this, you know, wow, look at that, you can't even share 12 foot lane with a Mini Cooper, you know, and they've never seen anything like this. So that was kind of fun. This was a meeting with the sheriff deputies and the CHP that work in Malibu, and one of the sets is kind of hidden on the right there. And I was already at this point to explain to them that we shouldn't be cited, we have a right to the lane, we had the laws and everything, and says, shut up. You know, I said, why? He says, just, just listen to me. And he says, I want to do a demo ride. We're going to go out to the PCH, and we're going to ride in the shoulder where we can, not in the shoulder where we can, and you're going to see what that's like. Seth is going to ride along with the, with the sheriff captain and, and see how this works out. So this is... Uh, this was the demo ride, and I had my video along. So you can get a sense of what it's like. And it's a lot of big orange riders. And he said, let me cut the sound up. So we're going to show him what it's like, and then we're going to just sort of control the lane. And what was the conclusion between swerving in and out around the rocks and just staying in the lane? They agreed. This makes sense. You should be controlling the lane. So it was a different approach. I thought it was really interesting. We would let them see for themselves rather than us shoving it down their throats. And I think Seth was right about this. Uh, so that's sort of what it's like. It's nice to go in the other way because then you get to see the ocean on the right side. So we go through that. And again, having this information is really, really useful. Now, cycling savvy was still not something I was going to easily sell to them. And, and unfortunately, this is what it took. Uh, one of their members. It's pretty much have an idea how this horrific accident occurred. We have confirmed that the victim here was an adult. You're looking up Hawthorne Boulevard. You can see how steep it is. The cyclist was coming down. He has to make perhaps as fast as 45 miles an hour. The Mayflower big rig was parked here at a red light at the corner. The light changed. The Mayflower started making the turn and the cyclist apparently had nowhere to go. The collision occurred here. The truck driver was not aware of it. He continued up the here, hill here at Ballon. You can see the skid marks. You can see where the bicycle ended up. And the truck driver, not knowing what happened, continued up the hill. Now, as we look from News Chopper 4, you can see that the big rig continued up the hill around the bend another several hours before he finally came to a stop. And unfortunately, the cyclist was trapped beneath the truck, was dragged all that distance. He was declared dead at the scene. We spoke with Sheriff's Commander Keith Swenson. Uh, the grade on Hawthorne Boulevard here is quite uh, high, so if you're going that kind of speed, there's, it's really impossible to stop. From what you know at this point, does the car driver face any culpability? There's no, no uh, crime uh, indicated on this whatsoever. The driver had no idea what had happened with the bicyclist, and everything the driver was doing was legal at the time. He <coughs> And so the investigation continues at this location. It is one of the hazards of Palos Verdes. The grades are so steep. And for bicyclists, it can be very difficult to stop, especially when a light changes. Reporting live from Palos Verdes Estates, Patrick Healy, NBC4. So this is sort of what it took. Because I think there was a realization that this was preventable. Uh, remember he said there was nowhere to go, as if a cyclist can only be on the right side of the road? You know, it's, it's a four-lane road there, and there are places to go. So Seth said, hey, I want to see what you have. And I said, OK. Uh, essentially, you know, the, the blog post that he did the job on me was let me tell you how to ride your bicycle. So basically now, Big Orange is the team, and Seth, they're saying they want me to tell them how to ride their bike. So that was an interesting switch around. Jerry, was that? Fatality, one of their guys? Yes, yes. He was a young man in his 30s. Uh, 
And yeah, it, it really shook up. He was, you know, everybody knew and liked, and he was gone. So this is, this is what, what it took to get it going. So what I did is I did a regular TNT to the board of directors of Big Orange, which has about 300 members, and uh, Seth Davidson is, yeah? What's a TNT? What's TNT? Truth and Technique, the classroom oh, session. Yeah. I stole that from Terry to use it. Also, ECH Pacific Coast Parkway. Yeah, this is, I had that zone too. So what I did was, uh, and you can get links to all of the uh, you know, stuff. So I did the regular three hour, I tried to do it fast, and I added the group stuff that I thought they wanted to see as well. You know, so this is sort of the, uh, you know, Seth in this blog saying this is interesting to see that these people have so much cycling and to see their reaction to this, reinforce how badly we of the underwear tribe, he talks about these guys are cycling in their underwear, are in desperate need of education. Unfortunately, the course is three hours long, which means your ass will be bleeding by the time it wraps up. He's got a way of talking. So I figured I got to do something here. I got to streamline this. And I did a lot of talk. Mike gave me some ideas. And I, I, I pulled things together. I used Google Slides uh, just because I'm not a big PowerPoint person. It was easy to take screen captures. And I just stole from Kerry's and Mike's online stuff, the current uh, classroom thing. And I just put together what I thought would make sense. Uh, this event of Google Sites, it really needs a good, good Wi-Fi all the time to, to run everything. But the conceptual design, I wanted to come up with something simple. I'm calling this dance plus three times four. Now, what does that mean? Originally, and, and Mike was talking to me about this too, he said, well, we really don't have a lot of videos and stuff that show these guys, the Leica crowd, doing the stuff. You know, you're going to alienate them with, with the, you know, middle-aged ladies and guys in Orlando. And they said, well, I'm going to try to turn that around, okay? What I'm going to try to do is show them that video of the dance and just start off with that. And then use that to discuss the questions that have come up. The questions that typically come up when I say, what are they doing? You know? And they say, oh, I guess they're, we eventually get to drive, right? They're driving their bikes. I said, well, how many people do this? You know, what percentage of cyclists? And some say zero, one percent, five percent, you know? I didn't say, what do you do? I said, what do you see? And they say, why not? And these questions always come up. First of all, is it legal? Is it safe? You know, it may be legal and safe, but it still may be rude. It may be stressful. So I base the course around those four questions, and we just go, go through those. Uh, and I wanted to have some type of a, of a takeaway as well. So this is sort of my takeaway, is four takeaways that, first of all, communicate with lane position. And I really like what I stole here. Here from the online stuff, which is the photo. I sort of put that one together uh, in one, because this is what they're doing. They're communicating whether they know it or not, right? By their lane position. So communicate with your lane position to avoid the door zone and right turning trucks. And that spoke directly to the fatality to realize that these are two, I mean, the door zone you can completely control. Right, you can wipe it out to zero. Right turning truck, I guess you could get a truck in the through lane making a right turn on you, but you're gonna reduce it you know, virtually to nothing. And we also showed them changing from the rear, and I eventually came around to call that got your back, which is kind of cool, lane changes. And if this were in a group thing, we might, we might do something like Mike said, the faster you go and the further left you have to be, it was individual. But I wanted four takeaways. Uh, so we did that, took it on the road. Now I actually did it first with the Long Beach Freddies, because they had reading Seth's blog, and they decided to, to do this first. So the first club edition was done at Long Beach, and this is from Seth's blog here. Uh, I'm going to read the bold part. The entire gang of speedsters was awestruck by the opening video clip of Kerry Caffrey, a yellow-shirted commuter on flat pedals, <laughs> totally owning a fast, congested roadway in Orlando by completely controlling the traffic around her. We all thought the same thing. If she can do it, why can't we? You know? <laughs> so it worked. I didn't have to show them super speedsters doing this. You know, uh, if Carrie can do it, come on, anybody. <laughs> stuff. So uh, we did that. Seth followed it up with, with some other stuff. So he's really, you know, he's read a lot, and it, it was really great to have him on board with this. Uh, he, I also did a follow-up ride along with uh, with the group. Because they still had some questions. They have some tough places there. They're PCH down by Seal Beach or Huntington Beach. 
uh, it's completely straight and it's fast and they have a shoulder and they're riding in the shoulder two abreast. Uh, there's no room for error there, but there's cars coming by at 65 miles an hour. It, 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 it's pretty tough. So I rode along with them on one of their uh, rides and I did something I hadn't done before is I put together a little observation report and did a video, took the clips out, and I, all this links to time frames. You know, here's the thing I was worried about them pulling off with the raised pavement markers. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, I would say situation, concerns, consider, you know, and then maybe some other stuff as well. So just sort of give them some other ideas. I never really, I didn't want to tell them what to do. I just wanted to say what I was concerned about. So, you know, these are screenshots from the video, and I think they found that really useful. I got some good feedback on that. So I had never done that before, and it was, it was a good ride. So you've got to be in shape to ride with these guys, even though these are older guys. Uh, this is actually a group that Steve Haig rides with sometimes. He's a former Olympian. You may have heard of him. So you run into some good. Now, you can sort of see the concern I had here, you know, so there's lots of stuff. Bike meet ends. This was great, you know. I say good stuff, too. He's changing from the rear. They did that. This one I didn't like where they just sort of move out. Nobody's really checking behind. So we did that. And after observing the long man, Seth came down. A lot of the big orange board came down. And they said, we're going to make this mandatory. You know, for all of our members, we're going to do two courses in the rest of this year, 2016, which we've done, and four more in 2017. And we're going to make everybody do that. And that's it. And uh, Greg Seranian, who is their, is their president, you know, uh, is really supportive, super supportive. And special deal, we, you know, $150, as many people as we can get in. We use the El Segundo Public Library. Cost me $10 for a room that has a situation set up like this. You can get 100 people to there. $10 for nonprofit. So it's really, really great. El Segundo, you gotta visit. They got the airport on one side, you got the oil refinery on the other side, and the third side, you have Hyperion sewage treatment plant. So it sounds like Newark on steroids, you know, it sounds really, <laughs> it's the most nicest town you'd ever want to go into, you know. In the high school, there's in more, more films than any because it's sort of like a Mayberry typical high school. It's, and that's where we do it. Just don't leave your wallet there. So we did two of the courses. And again, Seth had some comments about this in the Cycling in the South Bay. Much pride was swallowed, surprise. Much was learned. Implementing club-wide education doesn't make you any more of a bike dork or any less but it makes cycling just a tiny bit safer, as Fireman pointed out, one of the guys, even if 90% of these dorks don't get it, all you have to do is save one life and suddenly it was all worthwhile. Greg uh, Klein in Orange County uh, also used my materials and adapted it for, for his local thing, uh, and he did this with the Orange County Wheelman, uh, and it's really easy to share on Google Slides, it's another advantage. I did number two for Big Orange just like two weeks ago, get a 39. And also, Big Orange is inviting members of all other clubs to come as well. Good. So we're starting to get some other people. We had the Palos Verdes bike chicks in, and I think they're going to have their own course, maybe LaGrange. So we're sort of sucking them in, and it's getting a little bit cool now. So only took me three years, right? <laughs> and it took the life of the cyclist, unfortunately. Uh, but we're sort of going with this now. And it, it really is pretty exciting. So, so these are some of the implications here for what's happening. You know, it's really hard to get education into roading clubs. Even somebody like me who has some racing experience, you know, and I used to be one of them. Uh, serious injuries and deaths of team members can be a strong motivation, especially if the thought that the crash could have been avoided by the cyclist. I mean, for a club to think that had they done something like that, so-and-so would still be around, that, that's pretty powerful. And this is where you get into the delicate thing of the victim blaming versus, well, it's, you can still do things. You can if you have defensive bicycle driving, you know? You gotta be defensive, you know? Uh, showing and sharing cyclists have materials and illustration at events, meetings is one pathway for cycling savvy and CSR respect. They think you're a genius with this stuff. I mean, you show up at a city council meeting and you show some of these diagrams and wow, yeah. I, I've done my three minutes and I've had Another one says, I don't want to talk, let him go three more. You know, seriously, because we have this stuff. And it's very, very powerful, it's good stuff. Uh, you know, uh, roadies can be, I don't know what you, can be motivated by videos of ordinary cyclists. If they're doing extraordinary things on bicycle, you know, we all thought the same thing. If she, Carrie and others can do it, why can't we? 
Local videos and photos, I think, make a big difference. They really perk up when I show them coming up the purging bump or PCH. And the first year, I'm not riding much. I'm not really riding with them now. Uh, in fact, I'm a little bit afraid to. What if I cause them to go down someplace? I mean, it's kind of a funny situation to be in. You know, I, I feel a little hyper about that. But uh, I still have lots of videos of them, and I can use that. And I suggested, you know, instead of rotation with two cyclists coming back so that they're far on PCH, which is an 11 and 10 foot lane, that they should just come on one side. And so I can show them clips of that. And I think that really helps as well. Uh, we can sort of leverage this, hopefully, with other clubs. X Excess Racing in Chicago is a letter that he said, Seth, you know, I've heard about this, you know, we have very people in the team. You know, we had six fatalities in Chicago for circus this year since June, da 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 da. So it's getting out there, and I'm starting to communicate with him. I mean, I'm not in Chicago, so that makes it tough. The other thing I wanted to mention that this, this format, the dance plus three plus four, I like this framework because there's so much in cycling savvy, and sometimes you feel a little bit overwhelmed with all the stuff that is in there. And this is stuff that I think people can sort of carry around with me. It helps me. And they say, you know, well, what is cycling savvy? What do you do? And I said, well, you know, we do bicycle driving. He says, oh, you're out there. You're, you're one of those crazy ones. And these are the questions. So I, I know the questions that are going to come up. You know, the principles. I have them up for principles, you know. And I think they cover basically what we do. You know, we drive, communicate, we cooperate, and we facilitate. I mean, those things overlap. And it's not just we're lane control hogs, but these other things are also part of the package. And I think that, that really helps as well. Uh, you know, is it possible then to take this framework and create uh, uh, a cycling savvy light course? I actually want to do that. I know some of you have done light courses for various meetings, and I, I want to be able to do that as well. So that's one thing I want to do. And uh, when uh, Clint Sandusky, who did cycling savvy with Kerry and me in uh, Santa Ana a couple of years ago, uh, when he came to the last El Segundo course and he said, well, you, you did the main part like an hour 15 minutes. If you could do that, maybe we could do everything in one day. I'm not quite so sure about that. But there may be some advantages here to compressing things. And of course, since we have the online, you can always direct them to that. So that's one thing that we worked out. They wanted to know, could they get a special deal uh, instead of paying $150? My goodness, every, basically Seth pays it. Uh, instead of paying $150 each one, you could give us a reduction. They said, well, talk to Mike. They said, well, we'll throw in the online course as well. So now they go all get access to the online course, at least through 2017, as long as we don't change the policy on that. Again, we're giving a lot away, but hopefully this is a seed that will get things going. One question I sort of stuck at that on there, you know, how special is this Seth Davidson big R in situation? I don't really know. I mean, Seth is he's just a crazy guy, and he, Things that he hates, he just blasts the pot. Things that he likes, he gets really excited about. Uh, and uh, he's, he has a lot of influence in, in the Southern California bike scene. So, and Big Orange, they pride themselves as being the best in everything. We want to be the best bike club. Their, their motto is, don't be a dick. <laughs> uh, so just be a nice guy. And they're, they're, they welcome new riders. They have a, half the people are active competitors. About half just like to ride fast. And, work out. Uh, so is this generalizable to other locations and clubs? I I'm not sure, but uh, at least we got it going and we know it can happen. So we're getting some traction. I've been thinking about do we need special club edition train your bike? Do we need special club edition tour courses? And uh, I mean, I think that would be useful at some point. Uh, I now have an inquiry to do uh, part of a winter bike racing workshop for youth 9 to 18. That is a huge age range for people who drive cars and people who don't know what driving is. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one, but that's in January. But this has opened up this possibility. And that's a USA Cycling uh, event. So there's a possibility of getting in with USA Cycling that's involved in, in the racing scene. So that's sort of where we are. It only took me three years. Uh, I gave 100% to get to the front to, you know, get up there, redeem myself, and uh, that's it. So, uh, basically what I have to say.